diet the kinds of food that a person, animal, or community habitually eats. Disease, see illness. Elimination, the removal of physiological waste and encumbrances. The term is also used by many eritists to identify short or extended periods of intensive waste elimination. These eritists use the term instead of the word sick as the connotation of the latter is believed to be problematic. In parlance, a practitioner may say, I'm going through an intense elimination today meaning that he or she is presumably eliminating large quantities of waste and experiencing various symptoms of human illness. Instances of elimination usually spur a practitioner to de detoxify fast or abstain from mucus forming foods. So elimination is a word you will hear us say all the time. We use the word elimination instead of sickness because sickness really doesn't tell the story. What you're going through is an elimination. You are eliminating waste no matter what the ailment is, what you're going through, there's a, it's a, it can be viewed as some kind of elimination. And healing cannot take place until all of the waste is first eliminated and then the cellular regeneration can begin. But elimination is primary, it's fundamental to any type of serious healing. Enema, the injection of liquid into the rectum through the anus for the purpose of cleaning and evacuating the bowels. Fairly straightforward. Etymology, the area of linguistics that studies the source, origins, and development of words and morphemes. Methods include the examination of a word's earliest known use, changes in form and meaning, and its transmission from one language to another. So etymology is kind of a key to deconstructing problematic theories in my opinion if you can look and trace the history of a word you can gain a much deeper meaning into what is actually going on when somebody says the word nutrition I think of to suckle which is the origin of the the word you trace nutrition you go back to nurture Go for, you go. You look at the history of nurture, and you go to uh, the the suckling of a woman's breast. You know, so you could take these concepts back, and this always for me this is all opens up a, a, an entirely new world of possibilities to actually understand what these words were originally intended to me oftentimes the origin of the word will tell you much more be much more insightful than the uh, the general way that the word is used uh, in parlance fall or the fall intensive physiological elimination or healing crisis usually characterized by a failure of the endocrine system coupled with intensive eliminations on the cellular level. People experiencing a fall may be bedridden for a time and be unable to function in public spaces. Many long-term practitioners of the mucusless diet experience the fall eight to 12 years into their dietary practice. Given the severe nature of the symptoms, many practitioners have been known to blame the mucusless diet for the fall and have retreated back to various forms of mucus eating, including flesh and dairy consumption. Some eritists view the fall as a kind of rites of passage where the practitioner's dedication is rigorously challenged as he or she pays for their physiological debts or karma. See physiological karma. So I talked a, a little bit about the fall in the previous video, the, my, my own fall that I kind of went through a couple, started going through a couple years ago that I'm uh, getting toward the end of right now. But 
this is something you'll hear us talk about, especially with people that have been into the diet for a while. It's not to scare anybody away, but it's to prepare yourself for an ordeal that you may have to go through. And everybody I know that has been serious about the diet, whether they've identified it to be the fall or not, they've started to go through some very intensive periods of of, of just issues, you know, and this is where a lot of these gland weaknesses uh, start to express themselves. Uh, there's there's a lot to this. There's a lot to the fall. So if people are interested in hearing more about this, I can do some more videos on this. Just uh, make a request for it. But uh, this is something you'll hear us talk about sometimes. The fall fast to abstain from the intake of food and drink. It also, uh, it may also refer to various forms of dietary restriction, which include abstaining from solid foods, juice or liquid fasting, mucus forming foods, mucusless diet, from animal products, etc. Fasting may also refer more broadly to abstaining from uh, modern conveniences or unnatural additions. Uh, for example, a fast from electricity or the use of electronics for a period of time. So that is fasting, restriction or abstinence from something. Forced fast, concept proliferated by Brother Air, which refers to a period of time where one's own pathological conditions forces him or her too fast, that is, or abstain from the intake of food and drink. Air identifies sleep and death as being two forms of a forced fast. So this idea of a forced fast is interesting because in many cases people get so sick you know initially when you get sick or again have an elimination you lose your appetite but when it goes deeper and deeper you get to a point where you can't even eat you can't ingest something and now if you're at the hospital though that's when they start pumping you with the IV and, and and that kind of thing but uh, a coma when you're in a coma you're not eating you're fasting. It's a forced fast. And this is something that we see uh, in more chronic, you know, very extreme conditions is where your body just forces you to fast. You cannot eat. And this is just something, uh, this is like the, uh, the, the last ditch effort of nature to try and stop the eating process so that you can actually heal fruit the ripened ovary or ovaries of a seed bearing plant together with accessory parts containing the seeds and occurring in a wide variety of forms mucusless fruits refer to non-fat fruits which leave behind no mucus residue fruitarian an organism whose diet consists of only fruits Drawing upon Eret's mucusless paradigm, Professor Spira identifies a fruitarian to be a person who has consumed mucusless, that is fat and starch-free, fruits for an extended period of time. So I identify a true fruitarian not to be somebody that is really off into the mucus-forming items that may be considered to be fruitarian in nature, such as the nuts and the seeds and the mucus forming kind of avocados and stuff like that. To me, that's, I don't identify that to be fruitarianism. For me, somebody that eats nothing but grapes for five years, that is a fruitarian. Somebody that eats nothing but watermelon for 10 years, that's a fruitarian, <laughs> you know, somebody that eats nothing but uh, bananas for 30 years. That's a fruitarian. If you have other things involved, then, then that's not 
fruitarianism in my opinion in terms of uh, if you're going to identify yourself as I am a fruitarian now within the context of the mucus diet healing system you could identify certain fasting levels as fruitarian in nature if you're doing a grape fast that's a fruitarian fast you know it's a fruitarian level that you are visiting but can you live there you know that's what <laughs> many of us are trying to achieve is to get to the fruitarian level green leafy vegetables various mucusless leafy plants or their leaves and stems that may be eaten as vegetables healing the restoration of wholeness health and vitality professor Spiro also uses the word to mean the process by which one can slow pause or stop the aging and dying process I kind of view healing even though it doesn't have a etymological basis yet I just my own personal view on the word health or heal to heal it, it mean to for me means to stop uh, it's kind of like when somebody's on a horse and they say heal you know meaning stop now again I understand this is doesn't necessarily have a true etymological underpinning yet just my own understanding of the word health I kind of gravitate toward that that you stop the dying and aging process health and healing is to stop the process of decaying of disease of pain and suffering healing crisis naturopathic term that refers to a period of intensive physical and emotional cleansing or elimination common symptoms include the exp uh, expectoration of various colors of mucus from all orifices fever aches and pains headaches dizziness vertigo mood swings diarrhea vomiting dizziness loss of appetite depression or anxieties heart palpitation localized pain at the area of obstruction etc healing crisis illness a pathological condition whereby a part organ or system of an organism ceases to function properly it is often characterized by an identifiable group of signs or symptoms and the result of various forms of physical constipation due to the accumulation of uneliminated waste illness